Hi everyone, welcome back to Project Bracket Essentials. Let's talk about the flat map operator. We used the flat map when we were talking about mono dual method, but now we are going to go into more details because we already know a little bit how it works, uh, the merge, and uh, that was the prerequisite for the flat map. So uh, let's, imagine, uh, let's imagine the following scenario. We have a simple method here, and uh, you can think that this is going to be returned from a database or something that we are going to get a string that will represent the name and based on this string we are going to return a flux of data so let's uh, just add here if name dot equals uppercase a we are going to return a flux dot just let's say name a1 and you can just copy this uh, one here and you add name a2 I'm going to use a and b again so if it's not a I would like to return b1 and b2 So this is representing a database or whatever you're going to publish from your method. Now let's add a simple test. This test will be called public void flat map operator. And you can add here froze exception. Okay, so imagine that we have our own flux here flux and I will copy because it's exactly the same so we have our own flux here just a and b and let's imagine that we would like to use this a and b to find the name how would we do it we would use here flux dot uh, map let's say that we have to make it uppercase because of some weird database setup and now we have to just because we know how to use the map so we are telling here remember that the map will ap apply synchronously the whatever we have here for each one of the elements of this flux it means that for a it will call the final by name and for b it will call final by name but if we do this look what's going to happen when we add the return type, we have this flux of fluxes. So if we subscribe to this, this will not work. We have to, and here, this is an object, and then. So let's execute this. So and as you can see here, we have this flux array. So basically what we are trying to achieve here, we want to flatten this flux. We would like the result to be flux of strings. And that's how the flat map it works. It's going to flatten this result into what we are looking for. Now, how does it work? So the flat map, as you can see here, it's similar to the merge operator. Basically, it will get each one of the elements that are being emitted by the flux. So the flux here rep is represented by the arrows and the elements by these uh, circles. And it's going to get a synchronously, and then it will flatten these inner posts into a single flux. And it's really important that they are going to interleave it means that this order that you see here is not guaranteed and you can see here that the order of the flattened values will not uh, necessarily be preserved so how can we see this um, working here let's imagine that we have the following test step uh, verifier and then you create uh, let's call this flat flux Let's remove this one. 
expect subscription and then expect next and let's say that we are expecting this one followed by this one and then verify complete okay so the test works but let's say that we have one small problem let's say that we have a delay in the first flux so we have to add the delay here if we add the delay here it will not work because it's going to delay all the elements so you you're not going to see the result of the flat map until leaving the elements let's check this you will see that the result will still be a1 a2 b1 b2 now if you want to see that working you have to change the publishers so let's say that when we publish this one we are going to delay the elements for 100 milliseconds and uh, this will give an error so expect let me subscribe to this one just because it's easier so flat flux dot subscribe and of course since this is happening in a different thread i will just put this one to sleep for 500 milliseconds so when we execute you will see now that the result is b1 b2 is not a1 a2 b1 b2 because the delay that we have here in this first one is holding back so it's kind of exactly the same of what the merger was doing so now we have a different result because we are delaying the first one what happens if we want to keep it sequential exactly like we did here for the merge so we have this merge sequential and of course we have now the flat map sequential so we can copy here this one and just duplicate this method and we have flat map sequential let's go back to the documentation so flat map sequential as you can see here it will keep the sequence at the end result so basically you can see here that we have the first one being published and then we get the first one it subscribes and then it is uh, creating different publishers so uh, the the pink square is not going into the publisher so this one is being queued because we have one previously that uh, did not complete so this uh this thing here means that this publisher is completed so in this case since we don't have the this square is being queued and then once this one finishes then we will have both results that's what we get here at the end of this sequence so basically for each one of the elements we are creating a whole new uh, flux internally so this is happening asynchronously and you should not care about the threads that they are they are using so this is one of the benefits of the reactor you don't have to worry that much about the the threads you just need to know that they are running asynchronously and if you use flat map sequential it will keep the order of what you you are expecting when calling this uh, flat map so now we are going to see this result by changing the flat map here to flat map sequential let's execute and we have the result even though we have some delay so this is it for the, the flat map of course you have way more flavors but we are going to keep things uh, at uh, this point for now because once you understand the basic flat map everything else is just uh, more of the same with some different flavors so i hope you are enjoying see you in the next video bye